The toughest man that God ever made is at Adele City, Oklahoma, by the name of John Wesley Smith. That would not be disputed by very many, and those that did dispute that would try to get a tie. They said, well, I know another guy. He's as tough. True story. Guy's just, just an amazing guy. Won everything that you can win. There's not a name of a wrestling tournament with any level of credibility that he is not the champion of. Multiple times over, by the way. So his career comes to an end in 1992. Now, he was 27 years old. If I'm wrong, he was 28. He was a young guy, and he was still the best, but he stopped. There wasn't a question of could have he come back. This is 1992 after the Barcelona games. There wasn't a question of could he come up in, in, in 1993 and have won. As a matter of fact, the guy that did win is by the name of Tom Brands. Those two met, and the score was 14-3 to three and still lives on YouTube. So that it, it's not a debate. But John, John Smith was still in the practice room. He was leading the national championship teams. So We've got access to the absolute best guys at all times. He was a world Olympic coach. He's in the room. He's got access to the best guys at all times. Everybody that watched, he's still a man. And John Smith told my coach, Chuck Kearney, they were good friends and roommates at one time. He told him, yeah, winning the gold medal is not a problem. So, but I don't want to do the work that it takes to win the gold medal. My coach is going to make me train twice a day, every day. Even if my skills are of such that I could just show up and get the glory, my coach is going to make certain things and I don't want to do it. I don't want to travel. I don't, I don't want to go to Vegas for the Open. I don't want to go out to Omaha for the trials. I don't want to go out to Winnipeg for the Pan American Games. I don't want to go to camp, and I don't want to do this. What he said, he'd already done it six damn times, and nobody questioned, okay, great. But I appreciated very much that John Smith told us that because he was letting us in on a reality. I watched, just by example, Alexander Gustafson go through this John Smith moment. So Gustafson goes from on top of the world to nothing but main events to a whole bunch of world title fights to I'm out. And I'm going, no, wait a minute, no, Gus, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's not that Gus couldn't do it, and it wasn't even that he didn't enjoy it. He knew the train it was going to take to get there, but it's like, no, Gus, hold on. You have a different perspective because you only know title fights and main events. Come down one spot on the card. Do everything else you're doing, but now it's 15 minutes. As opposed to 25, the preparation for that is, is different. The pressure that's put on you being in the marquee versus being in the co spot of the marquee. I mean, it was just an example. That when Gus said, I'm going to go from this to nothing, it's like, no, no, no. No, there, there, there's, there's still another step. And fortunately, we got Gus to listen. We got Gus to come back and listen. And go, oh, gosh, thank goodness. And many more memories and many more years in me. But this is a very real example. Khabib. Khabib came out yesterday. Khabib is doing a lot of media right now. Possibly more media than I've ever seen Khabib do. Khabib is doing more media to serve his disciple, Islam, than Khabib used to do when he had a pay-per-view to sell. But Khabib came out, and everybody's got to ask Khabib if you're coming out of retirement. Khabib said no, and he went even a little bit further. He said, that fire is gone. I, I don't have it. And it's very relevant, because now he's talking about what John Smith talked about. He's talking about what Gus talked about. But you don't see a lot of champions in that spot as young as John Smith or Khabib, as successful as John Smith or Khabib. You don't see a lot of that. Not very many guys can leave the store a sport and want to stay gone. But for a guy to say that I don't have the fire, oh, and by the way, I never really did. I never really had a passion for that, though he won every damn round that he ever did. I've only heard two guys openly talk about it, George St. Pierre and Khabib, the two best to have ever done it. And I find it interesting. And St. Pierre, by the way, didn't just get up and, and exit stage left either. St. Pierre still goes in the gym twice a day, every day. Are you guys aware of that? St. Pierre travels and he loves to try. He goes and gets private lessons while he's gone. I mean, he also could not just cut the cord. That's what I'm sharing with you. Now, Khabib's in a very unique situation because that itch is real and being part of it is real and being in front of you guys is real, but Khabib can do just as much media. Khabib's legacy is just as protected, if not more so. By example, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame post-retirement. Khabib's record is not being touched. Khabib is in the gym. He has young men who he's grooming. He's at the events. 
In one weekend, we did an Eagle FC. We we're out in Florida. Khabib did that. And the very next night, I'm watching Bellator, which was in Arizona. Khabib was there. Khabib ran the Eagle FC and flew and cornered his guys over here. I mean, it's one of these things where he's busy. He's hustling. He's still involved. So maybe he doesn't have that. Maybe he didn't go through the withdrawals, which would be great. Very hard. It's very hard to participate in this sport if you're not in there doing the sport. It's very hard. Announcing roles, promoting roles, trainers' roles, managers' roles, cutmen roles, whatever, the things that go involved, it's very difficult to do. To be found a way, maybe that's why it was easier for him. John Smith was the head coach of Oklahoma State University, who was the national champions, by the way. I only share that so he also didn't have to cut the court. He was still getting his fix. He was still at the events. He was still in the sauna. He was still in the practice room. He was still having the conversations. Maybe that made it easier. St. Pierre left, came back once, left again, hasn't come back, but he's talked about it, and he's still in the room. Maybe that makes it easier. Be a very hard spot if you didn't choose when your career was done. And that's the common. The common spot is that you don't get to choose. And when that happens for you or that happens to you, I think we could all see where that'd be very difficult. Now, like anything in life that's difficult, you've got to move forward. You cannot stay in the cracks. you got to get out and you've got to go forward. But I, you could see where it would be a struggle. For anybody. We don't read a lot about athletes anymore. Athletes from yesteryear, unless it has to do with alcoholism and drug use, we don't see their names in the headlines. It's just one of these spots where sometimes they do stay in the cracks. They don't know how to go forward. They don't know how to give back. They don't know how to participate. They don't know how to stay involved. Another very common thing for athletes, whatever field they leave, is they then don't even watch that sport anymore. They turn on it. He's a great basketball player. He stops playing basketball. He, he turns on the sport. Tell other people not to play. The game's no good. The NCAA is corrupt. The league is dirty. You know, whatever it is, they don't even turn the TV on. It's just one of those things. It's a hard spot. And I find it very interesting when Khabib talks about it because I find Khabib to be very sincere and very consistent. And the elephant in the room. Many people think that Khabib's going to come back. They still see Khabib. They see training footage of Khabib. Khabib looks great. They love Khabib like they want this to be true. They think if Charles gets to jump on Islam, maybe maybe this is the way we get Khabib back. But I want to remind you of the John Wesley Smith story. It wasn't a matter that he didn't think he could beat the competition. It wasn't a matter that he didn't think he could get the glory. He didn't want to do all the things that you don't see that lead into that event. That was just a very open and honest comment. He made that to Chuck Kearney 27 years ago. Chuck made it to me 24 years ago, and I've never forgot it. And I see other guys that do it. And when you talk about Khabib, this isn't a matter that he thinks Charles is going to take from him. This isn't a matter that Charles is going to outshine him. He, he sincerely, Khabib doesn't care. Sincerely. Great job, Charles. I did a great job, BJ Penn, before me, and that, great job. That, that's Khabib's attitude. But I'll just share with you, when we keep talking about the return of Khabib, we, we, we keep on forgetting what would have to go into that, which you could pinpoint to one thing, the scale. And I, I, I could stop you right there when you talk about, will Khabib come back and fight Char Let me Let me stop you before we get there and go back to what John Smith said, which is all the work that leads you to get here. In Khabib's case, he's still got to beat the scale, and that's going to be in his head. Much like it was Gustafson. All the pressure, all the media, all the highlights, all the video games, all the everything. And so he, the only other way he knew was to not do any of it. Well, no, there was an in-between. We got Gus to listen to that. He's a lot happier now. I don't know that Khabib would be happy at 170 pounds. I don't know that Khabib would be happy being ranked number four in the world. I just want to remind you guys that before you think it's a matter of Khabib coming back to take what he never lost, which is the, the lightweight championship, before you think that, there's a byproduct and there's things that happen outside of the camera. And getting Khabib later in life down to 155 pounds is going to require a discipline, a lifestyle change, a change in your physiology that he's openly telling us comes with a flame and comes with a fire that he no longer has. When Khabib talks, he tells the truth. And when Khabib talks, I encourage you to listen.